Okay, the next talk will be given by Pascal Kunz. Thank you for giving the talk. Yeah, thank you. Um, I hope everybody can hear me uh, well. Um, yeah, so I'm basically going to give the sort of related work talk to, to Ricardo's uh, talk this morning. Um, and um, so this is joint work with uh, Vincent and Philip that we kind of did last year. Um, so, so it's about the, the, the network untangling problem that Ricardo already described, and it's, it's basically a more general setting than, than the one he looked at. Um, so um, just to repeat a, a little terminology, I mean, it's, it's basically going to be the same as, as, as this morning. So we have a temporal graph, so just a vertex set and a set of edges um, on this, on this uh, set of vertices. And uh, so we called it a, a, K, a K activity timeline. So we just have um, uh, sort of uh, tuples like this. So we have a vertex and a starting time and an end time. So, and we want the starting time to be before the, the end time. Um, so uh, these are supposed to kind of cover the graph um, and we're only allowed to use every vertex K time. So for every vertex, we're, we're allowed to select um, K of these, um, of these intervals. And uh, we, ha we have to cover the entire graph. So for every edge, we have to have sort of uh, one of the endpoints active at that uh, time point. Um, um, yeah, so, the, so um, the, the main difference to, to what we had this morning is that um, I, I guess Ricardo looked at the case where, where K equals one. Uh, now, now we can have um, larger values there. Um, yeah, and so what do we look at? Um, so we so we have uh, two pr problems based on this. So um, um, we want to either minimize. So we we want to fi find a K activity timeline that minimizes something. Um, and the two possibilities of what we can minimize is either the 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 sum of the lengths. So this is the here the the red thing. Um, uh, so, so we sum over all intervals that we choose, we, we sum the lengths, um, or we can try to minimize the maximum length of any, of any interval. Um, and um, so Ricardo already kind of pointed this out this morning that there's a little um, weird thing going on here um, uh, in terms of how we define the lengths. So if we, we only choose um, a, a certain vertex for one, one time step, well, then, if you look at the at the definition here, uh, then then the the difference between when it starts and when it ends is zero. So these kind of don't uh, don't contribute anything to the to the to the uh, sum of the lengths. Mm -hmm. And um, so for um, for the blue version here, this doesn't really matter. It kind of just shifts everything by one. But for the 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 sum version, the the red version, uh, this this does make a big difference in terms of. Um, how hard it is to solve the problem, uh, at least if you look at the parameter, if, um, the parameter L. So I hope uh, um, this, this kind of problem definition is, is clear to everybody more or less. Um, so we can move on. So what, what were we trying to find out? So we, so we wanted to look at the parameterized complexity of these two problem variants. Um, so just, to, just a reminder, we just had it. Um, here's the definition of fixed parameter trackal. So we have some parameter, I call it param. Um, and uh, so we have, we, we're allowed to have any kind of uh, dependence in the running time on, on this parameter, but we have to be poly polynomial in everything else. Um, and so what are some parameters one might look at? Well, I mean, number of vertices. I mean, in, in, in normal graphs, obviously this is trivial usually uh, to look at the number of vertices as a parameter, but in temporal graphs, it's not, um, as we'll see. Um, another thing is a K, so the number of intervals we're allowed to select for every vertex is, is a parameter. Um, then uh, L, so, the, the, so the, the interval length bound, so either the, the bound on the maximum interval length we're allowed to select or the, the bound on the, on the sum of the interval lengths. And then finally, tau, I call it tau. I think everybody else calls it either t, uh, capital T or, or lowercase t or something else. Um, so the lifetime of the graph. Um, um, so these are the kind of the parameters that we looked at. And, and here, this, this is an overview of our results. So the first thing uh, we, we see is that, um, so if, if, if we leave out n, so the number of vertices and, and fix everything else to constant values, the, the problem is already NP hard. So um, uh, combinations of these parameters aren't going to be very helpful. 
So the interesting per, uh, parameterizations are those that kind of involve uh, and the number of vertices. And here we get um, uh, a few results. So um, for, for n plus k, so this is a number of vertices plus how often we're allowed to select each vert vertex. Um, so both problem variants become um, FPT. So um, this actually works slightly differently in the case of um, here the, the blue version, so that where we, where we have a limit on the maximum uh, uh, interval length. This is basically just a, a search tree because we know that if we're going to select a vertex at a certain time, well, we might as well select it for, for as long as we were allowed to. Be, um, um, so we, we can kind of get a similar search tree algorithm to, to what, so the typical thing that you do for vertex cover. Um, and then uh, for for this for the red version, this works slightly differently. This is kind of a dynamic program, um, which um, I won't get into. Then uh, for so if we look at the the L the the interval length bound, the, then the problems start to behave slightly differently. So here we have the um, so for the blue version, um, we have that the that the problem is is W one hard with respect to n even if L is is fixed to one. So even if we for the the the, um, the intervals we select only cover two layers. The problem is already W one hard um, for um, for for the number of vertices. Or just in case anybody's not familiar with um, with this, so W one hard intuitively just means probably not FPT. I, I think that's not a great definition, but close enough. Um, but um, but the the problem is XP. So what XP means is that um, if we if I set the the parameters some constant value, the problem is um, is polynomial time solvable. Um, so this is what happens with uh, with the blue version, the red version. So where we have the look at the sum there, the the problem is is, is fixed parameter tractable for n plus l. So for um, number of vertices and interval length bound. Um, and if we only look at the number of vertices, then we kind of don't know uh, um, whether it's FPT. Um, so if anybody could tell me this, that would uh, uh, that would be helpful. Um, uh, so what I wanted to talk a little more about is is kind of this result. So that the the algorithm for for L, n plus l. Um, so let me start with the with the. Um, general idea of how, how, how we did this. Um, so um, the idea is that, so if, if I have some solution, then, um, then I can split it into those intervals uh, that don't take up any cost. So this is uh, here, TZ, what I call, what we call T0. Um, so the problem with these um, um, intervals is that I can have a lot of them um, because K could be very large so that we're, I'm, so I'm allowed to select a lot of intervals for every vertex. So I don't really have a good bound on the number of these, but uh, for the, for the vertices here that, that, um, uh, or for the intervals that, um, that have positive length for these, um, these I can kind of bound and I can, I can do a lot of guessing and branching and so on. Um, and uh, then how does this help me? Well, I mean, the first thing is um, I kind of have to branch to guess what um, how how, um, um, how how the second set what the second set, set looks like. Um, so I can't do, do this completely stupidly because um, the the lifetime might be very large, but um, I, I don't. I mean, it's 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 it's. I mean, it's not completely trivial, but it's not too hard either. Um, and then the idea is um, for every possible choice of, of, of this part of the solution, um, I can give an ILP that kind of figures out whether um, I can complete the solution with, with some T0. Um, so, yeah, so that's a general strategy. Let me start with a third step. Um, um, so how, how does the third step work? Um, so, so if I have L equals zero, so if, if I'm only looking at intervals of length zero, then the first thing that, that, that you can notice is that uh, the order of the, the layers is completely irrelevant. I can, I can permute them arbitrarily because every interval in the solution only touches one layer anyway. Um, so, um, and this, this is gonna be is kind of the key why that's, that, that makes this ILP work. So I have this temporal graph here, and um, so a little notation is kind of ugly. So let's just say this a is is the number of times a certain edge set appears anywhere in the in the in the graph. It really doesn't matter where because I don't care about the order of the layers. 
So it just it just counts the number number of times this edge set appears, and then uh, C is just uh, the set of all vertex covers for this particular edge set. Um, uh, don't have to be sm uh, small or anything. Um, and then um, I, I, I can define variables um, that I call kind of X, S, E. So, um, so what does this variable mean? It means how many times do I use the vertex cover S to cover this particular edge set? Um, so the idea is, I, have, I mean, I obviously, only I, all I care about is that I have to cover every edge set that appears in the, in the temporal graph often enough. Um, um, if, if I do that, then, then, I mean, I have a few more conditions, but basically that's, that's my goal. Um, and then, yeah, so um, um, this isn't great. So, uh, but um, uh, so, th so, so the number of variables only depends on the parameter n. The dependence is kind of ugly, but um, um, I'll talk. I'll say a little more, bit more about that in a second. Uh, and then here's my ILP. I don't. I don't want to labor it too much. So, so all I say here in the first condition is that I have to cover every edge set often enough. So. So if I sum over all uh, possible ways of covering the edge set E, I have to do this often enough to cover every appearance. And then this second condition just expresses that um, I don't use any vertex too often. So um, uh, the sum over all um, vertex covers that contain a certain vertex V is at, um, is at most K. And then, um, I mean, I have to be, I have to be, I have to use integers. Um, um, so, so this is kind of the, an ILP we can use to describe the special case for L equals zero. Um, and really, I mean, the, the reason why it's correct is really just because I don't care about the order of the, the, the layers. Okay, so that's my LP. So how does this help me? Well, I mean, there's a classical result that says that, um, um, that uh, we can solve ILPs in, in FPT time with respect to the number of variables. So um, obviously my, the number of variables here in this ILP only depends on, on N, so the parameter. So uh, I, can use, um, I can use Leinster's algorithm to solve this. Um, so, um, so here I guess the ugly part is that Leinster's algorithm already has terrible dependence on the, on the parameter. And then, and then here um, the number of variables also has uh, terrible dependence on the parameter, so okay. Uh, but um, and one one side note is that this this ILP also works for for the for the other variant for the for the uh, blue variant because basically I mean if L equals zero it doesn't matter if I'm minimizing the 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 sum or the the maximum they're both going to be zero um, so so this actually works for both um, um, but the second part is only going to work for the sum version so um, so now I want to kind of guess the 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 intervals. Um, uh, of positive length. Um, so the first thing I can notice is that um, the the number of these intervals is bounded by the parameter and uh, the the number of layers that are affected by by um, um, by these intervals is also bounded by the parameter. So basically, uh, what is the what is how, what does the solution look like? Well, not exactly. I mean, there are very few layers that are kind of covered by by long intervals, and then everything else has to be solved by um, uh, with uh, length zero intervals. Um, um, so so we we can kind of think about the the interval graph induced by these intervals. So here in this picture, for example, um, I have these three long intervals here. Uh, they they intersect. So 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 the, um, or these two intersect. So they they would kind of be adjacent in the interval graph. And uh, what what I'm really only interested in is the connected components of this interval graph. So um, kind of the these three intervals here would be one connected component and these two over here would be another connected component um, and uh, the, the, idea, the idea here is that I can kind of uh, look at these independently and obviously I can only have at most l connected components because I don't I don't only have l um, l intervals um, so so for, for each of these l connected components I'm going to guess a lot of things I'm going to guess what what do the layers look like that I that I want to cover? So I would guess here uh, these six graphs here in the back. So I'm allowed to guess them because um, <laughs> there's only I mean the number of graphs on n vertices is bounded by a function in n. 
Um, so I can guess all six of these. I can even I can also guess um, what intervals appear. I can use I used to cover them, so I could guess what where these three interview here, intervals here are located. And then finally, only I also want to guess the order of the components. Um, so, um, so so I would guess that uh, kind of this component comes before this one, and then uh, I can I can check whether uh, it is possible to kind of embed these components in the temporal graph. So first, I, I try to find the earliest position to put this uh, component here. And then after that, I find the earliest position where I can put this one. And this is just about checking where do, where do the graphs or do, where do these edge sets appear in the, in, the, in the temporal graph. And then once I've done this, I can just, I, um, I mean, I know, I know kind of what these um, uh, shaded areas look like. Um, so I can get, I can um, take out all the edges that are covered by 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 this, and then uh, I can input the rest of the of the temporal graph to the ILP, and the ILP is going to tell me what the what these uh, diamond uh, intervals look like. Um, um, so this can also involve um, sort of um, intervals that are within the the shaded areas, but um, because the, the, this, um, these these uh, shaded areas might leave some edges uncovered. Yeah, so that's the basic idea uh, behind this this algorithm. Um, so let me uh, say a few more things. So here's another overview of the results. Um, so obviously, so the big uh, open question that's kind of kind of um, left over here in this picture is is whether um, here um, whether I really need the L. My gut feeling would be that it's probably hard, but I don't know. Um, the, I guess another question one might raise is, um, uh, so I already mentioned that um, maybe this, the algorithm I presented it may, might not be great if you actually implemented it. Uh, maybe you can find a more practical algorithm or at least one that doesn't use Leinster's uh, algorithm as a subroutine uh, would be nice. Um, yeah, so, so that would be another question. Um, one thing we're working on a little bit right now is, is, is what if we look at kind of restricted graph classes? Um, 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 do, uh, what if I, if I restrict the underlying graph or each layer to be in some, some graph class, I guess, um, um, and, and related to this also, what if I look at structural graph parameters, some things like tree width or, or whatever of, of the underlying graph or, or, or something else, um, uh, do, do I get results for this? Um, so I, th I think generally it's going to the 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 promising cases are going to be some structural graph parameter plus something like K or L. Um, uh, I think uh, um, I mean obviously um, I mean structural graph parameters are usually bounded by N, so the so structural par graph parameter by itself isn't going to help, but. Um, um, maybe some combinations with with other parameters, or another question one could also look at um, uh, that might be interesting is is um, what if we? I mean, this is kind of a, a way of uh, um, moving uh, vertex cover to a temporal setting. Uh, we could also do this with other problems. What if we kind of look? I mean, I don't know if this is motivated by practice. I mean, this problem has a, is nice because it's it has a practical motivation. But would dom I don't know dominating set in the setting also be motivated in some way. Um, my feeling is that, um, I mean, most of our algorithms should carry over, um, maybe not N plus the, the N plus K FPT algorithm, but um, uh, at least the search tree algorithm, but um, generally, um, yeah. So one could also look at other problems other than vertex cover. Yes, yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm done a little bit early, um, but yeah. Thank you. Any question? Uh, I have two questions. The the first one is: Did you looked into kernels? Because it, it sounds a bit with your like uh, these outliers that don't cost much that you could de detect them and reduce the the size. Um, the proofs aren't really worked out, but uh, I looked at this kind of briefly. My feeling is that if that n plus k and n plus l should not have um, uh, kernels, uh, polynomial kernels. Um, I mean, I, I never wrote it down, but but uh, I had I had a proof on my on my whiteboard. That's the kind of the state of it. Um, uh, so so no no guarantees, but I think n plus k plus l should work. Um, uh 
um, I think there, then you kind of, um, uh, if, 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 so if the lifetime is large, but n plus k are both uh, uh, relatively small, then there have to be a lot of empty layers, and then I can throw some of the empty layers out. I think that should be the, the basic idea. And the second question is, why do you call it untangling? uh that's that, i get asked that question a lot but uh, my answer is that um that it wasn't me um uh, so it was it was called that by uh so uh, i think uh, ricardo mentioned it, uh, rosenstein et al um um who introduced the problem 2020 2019 something like this um uh i think i mean my explanation is was that um i think it's trying to simplify a very complicated temporal graph by kind of um, saying these are the, the the times where certain vertices are important uh, and that kind of untangles the graph by telling you what the what the relevant parts are but uh, this is kind of uh, me making things up um, okay okay thank you mm -hmm. any other question Thank you. So uh, just uh, to be sure, so the, the L parameter in your algorithm comes from the branch in Rai. Is, the, is there where you using this L parameter? Um, so the, the, reason, the uh, question is why can you go from M to the parameter M plus L to yes, N? Yes. Um, because I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm using the fact, for example, that um, that uh, the number of layers that are kind of affected by these yeah. long intervals is, is bounded. Otherwise, um, there might be these intervals might be everywhere. I see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have time for and for another question. If there is. Otherwise, let's think this bigger again. Yeah.